is mainly closure plans, um, but right when the governor was speaking tonight, um, I put some quick, if we remain open, <laughs> things on here. So I'll quickly start with that, give the board a chance to ask questions. We also have Grant Geisler, business manager, Jim Birmingham, food service, and Angela Rosa building and grounds in the room. And Michael Berry is on the phone, director of curriculum and technology. Um, should they, they can also answer any questions you might have. Be before you get into these plans, because I feel like we're gonna have some questions directly related to these plans, can I ask a, que a question at a 5,000 foot level that I do not know the answer to? Uh, what is our ability as a school district, as a school board, to close our schools if we believe that the risk to the community and to the state is sufficiently high to do so, even if the governor does not want to do that at a statewide level? The ramifications <coughs> for students and student days goes beyond what the school board has um, the, re the ability mm -hmm. to respond. Yeah. Um, so the agency of education would be the one who would have to waive student days okay. for us. Um, this significant is student days. We're not yeah, talking we're like getting. we're not oh, talking yeah. like one day school snow day. Yeah. You know, like the board can do that, but significant student days for learning um, would have to be waived by the board. Um, yeah. It has significant the state. Board. The state. The st I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the state board. The state or the agency of education. The agency of education. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, that has ramifications. The other ramification is should we decide to close on our own, this was discussed in the regional superintendent's meeting I was in this morning, is the decision on how do we make the decision to reopen. Mm -hmm. So who, whose decision is that? Um, and that, that is, um, that would be a very hard decision if we were on our own for me to me or us, quite frankly, to make that decision about when is it safe to reopen? Why safe now and not, you know, why is it safe Tuesday and not Monday? You know, like those kind of questions without the backing of the Department of Health and Agency of Education guiding us in that decision is incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I'd like to speak that a little. Um, a few things. For one, for the board to close the schools unilaterally, and, you know, as Lydia alluded to, would be risking being out of compliance with the law, which would have um, you know, ripple effects for our students. For instance, we couldn't necessarily guarantee that our current senior class could graduate. Um, you know, we couldn't um, necessarily guarantee that you know, anyone could move on. We just, you know, we would be, we, we really need the cooperation with the state to do that. I think the second point, which I think is equally as important, um, we are not health professionals. The administration are not health professionals. Um, if the recommendation from the Department of Health and the Agency of Education, which is in, which we trust is being informed by the science and talking to health professionals, uh, is that we do not close unless we have a positive COVID response. Um, I'm not sure we're in a position from expertise or otherwise to contradict that. Uh, and I think a decision that we'd make to close schools would be based on public pressure and um, factors that probably are not as well advised by science as possible. And while we may disagree with the decision, and you know, some of us probably do, and I think there's good reasons to perhaps be skeptical of it, I don't think the board should step in to the place of the Department of Health if the Department of Health's recommendation is to keep schools open. I think we can do things to you know, ease burdens on, on, our, population, on our population, uh, and I think Libby's outlined a lot of these, but I would, I would feel very uncomfortable with the board um, making a decision that I, I, I can't say would be you know, informed by experts or by science. I'm sure nearly every board member has been or will be asked that exact question yeah. yes. in, the, in the coming days. I will say, with regard to the governor's press conference, and I do not envy the governor's position, he's balancing yes. a lot of priorities, but I do personally, as a representative of this commu community for our schools, find it concerning that we're, that in a state of emergency, we're prohibiting gatherings of 250 plus people when they're not um, deemed necessary as public school is, 
but for these public school gatherings where every day we have 250 plus kids and adults in this building that can be acting as vectors for this mm -hmm. virus between at-risk members of the community, even if some of our students aren't the most at-risk members of the community, I just do not understand that logic, and I want to put that out there for the public um, to know how one of their representatives feels. Yeah, and I, I think, that as, as I said, I think those concerns um, are, I, I, think, I think there are a lot of, of ways to slice and dice it. I, I think, I've, you know, the concerns are real. I think, you know, there were some things about the governor's press conference that seemed somewhat inconsistent. Uh, but again, I think from, in terms of the ramifications and the fact that we are in unprecedented territory, um, I, I think it's a very difficult place for the board to step in. I think we have to listen to the, to the health professionals um, and, and act accordingly. I, I, but yes, yeah, I, I'm not gonna say that, that uh, there aren't reasons to be concerned, and I, I think it's a, it's a tough line to walk. I, I will also say, um, talking about this before we go into I this plan. I, oh. yeah. go, go ahead, Bridget. So I know that Anika said she has a limited, perhaps possible amount of cell phone battery, and um, I might be in the same situation, and I was just wondering if we could kind of yep. re-enter the order of the meeting so that things that have to be addressed and things that have to be decided come first. And to the extent there's further discussion, that comes later. I don't, I'm not trying to cut it off, but like, yeah. Yeah. maximize our ability to participate. Would that be okay? Yeah, no, that's fine. I, I just, um, I, I kind of wanted to clearly make the point about, you know, the board's authority and the ramification of the board asking, because I think a lot of people are watching on TV and that's one of the top questions on their mind. Um, but that's a good point. Let's move to the, sure. the have tos. Okay, Thanks, so Bridget. remaining open, it says plans on this document. <clears throat> uh, I think it's just things to consider first. Um, because if we are required to stay open, it will be as business as usual as we can possibly make it. Having said that, nothing about this week has been business as usual. Um, and just need to say that. <laughs> but we'll do, we'll do what we can. Cleaning the buildings. Uh, we moved to cleaning procedures level two for the past two weeks. We've been doing that since uh, the February break. We have a three to four week supply of this type of cleaner left and have been told that all suppliers are out of supplies. Um, we have tried to contact suppliers who are not our typical distributors of, of cleaning supplies. They are not taking on new people right now and they are beginning to prioritize what supplies they have left for, for the neediest population. We will not be able to get new cleaning supplies. Um, I have one week of supply of level three cleaning products. This is what we use for bloodborne pathogens. Um, and. Uh, human waste that we need to clean up. We have approximately a four week supply of level one cleaner. Uh, that is what has typically been used in schools. We haven't been using that typically with our custodial crew um, in the last two weeks, as I've said, but there is level one cleaners within bottles in each classroom with rags um, because we have run out of wipes um, and alcohol based hand sanitizers and we cannot order more despite trying on Amazon W.B. Mason, Staples, anywhere you could possibly imagine. That is unavailable right now, so we've given level one cleaners to our teachers. Teachers are using that quite liberally, as expected, to keep our kids safe, and that will run, up, run out faster than usual. All frequently touched surfaces, like doorknobs, are cleaned daily, if not multiple times during the day. <clears throat> uh, we have checked with the fire department to see if we could keep our doors open to to limit the amount of touches on things like doorknobs. The fire department is not okay with that for fire safety reasons. So we still need to keep our doors closed. Um, the Secretary of Education was made aware of our cleaning supply situation earlier today. He did not respond with any kind of advice for me. Um, and we are not alone in our cleaning supply situation. Other school districts are in a very similar situation that we are with our cleaning. Um, even if we can last for that three to four weeks with our cleaning supplies, once those are gone, they are gone indefinitely. We don't know when they will, will be able to be or reordered. Um, we can't hold school if we can't clean our buildings. That is just the bottom line. 
Um, absences with students. Parents, I want all parents to know that they are well within their rights to keep their students home right now. Please call the office. It will be an excused absence. Um, and we will do the best we can with learning opportunities should you decide to do that for your students. Uh, we will need guidance from the AOE uh, for student days. All superintendents will be asking for that. Uh, absences with teachers. A typical Friday, we have about 10 to 11 teachers out on a typical Friday. We had 22 out today. Uh, I expect that to go higher. Teachers are allowed to take up to three six days without any kind of documentation from a doctor, from a medical professional, um, and I expect them to do that. Uh, after three days, I can demand a doctor's note, so we, we will do that as well. Um, however, if we do not have teachers to work with the students, uh, I will be talking with my principals this weekend to figure out how exactly we handle that situation and keep, kid, keep kids safe um, and keep groups full of 250 people. Um, uh, bus drivers is another big concern. Many of our bus drivers are elderly uh, and they have voiced considerable concern about coming to work with a group with a bus full of small children who very well could be carriers of the virus, um, and, and they will be getting calling out sick soon. Um, so if we can't get our students to school, parents, um, I suggest you begin preparing for that eventual reality, that if we can't, don't have bus drivers, we don't have substitute bus drivers to step in at this moment. That's hard on a typical situation, and there's nothing about this that's typical. That's pretty much what I have with remaining open plans. My teachers are awesome. They will do the best they can. Um, with the situation right now, they are working incredibly hard to keep kids calm, to give them accurate convers information, to love them. Um, Jim is, and his staff is amazing in ensuring that kids are getting food on a daily basis and still getting pretty good food if you haven't had our cafeteria food yet. <laughs> Um, so we will run business <clears throat> as normal as we possibly can until we are given different guidance. I'm happy to take any questions on that up until this point. Yeah, and I do want to remind people that for many of our students, the food that they get at school is the a very important part of, <clears throat> of their nutrition and sometimes the most nutritious meal they're provided yes. in a typical day. Um, did you want to talk at all about after school type yep. activities? Yeah, thanks Grant. Yeah. Thanks Grant. Thank you for um, reminding me of that. Uh, our after school programming with part two will <coughs> remain open as long as our schools remain open. Um, part two, while they are slightly short staffed now because <laughs> their people are UVM students and St. Mike students and college students and many of their, or some of their employees have been told to go home and not come back. Um, they are stressed in terms of staff right now, but um, they are incredibly dedicated to our students and their programming, and they will also do the best they can with a limited staff. Um, everything else that is non-essential, and I consider part two essential, and obviously the school day essential, will be canceled from here on out moving forward. Um, and our buildings will not be able to be rented um, all people who already have currently rented our building going forward have been told that they need to cancel or po postpone no. their events. Yeah, and just a note to the community, I know that a lot of businesses have, removed, have moved to a remote uh, working environment. If you do have more flexibility now, uh, if you're someone who relies on part two, more flexibility now to maybe yeah. watch your kids after school because your, your work situation has changed, mm -hmm. Um, that could definitely alleviate some of the, the yep. staff shortages that Part yep. Two is experiencing. So yep. please consider that if that's yeah. an option. And, to and Jeff O'Hara, if you've worked with Part Two, you know Jeff O'Hara is amazing and responsive, and he will gladly work with any family yeah. that um, yeah. contacts him. Um, anything else that I missed, guys? Is that true with like school sports too? School sports, we don't have word on from the VPA yet. The rest of the winter season was canceled um, yesterday, today. Do you know? Um, and we haven't heard word on spring sports. As of right now, until the VPA makes that decision, as of right now, school spring sports will still practice. That will be pretty much the only usage of our spaces after school activities. As of right now. <laughs> that could change Ryan? 10 minutes from now. <laughs> sure. Libby, I'm curious, so maybe Mike could answer. I mean, as you already mentioned, you know, this week was not as normal. 
-hmm. We are going on with school into the future. Mm -hmm. Obviously, kids from K through 12 will notice that things are different. I suspect there will probably be not only distraction, but also heightened sense of maybe fear, insecurity. Mm -hmm. Do we have any, I don't know you're meeting with the teachers and administration, but do we have any plans for curriculum or instruction changes mm -hmm. to maybe accommodate the for different dynamic in the school? We don't have any specific plans since school is staying open. We haven't specified that. Um, our teachers are reacting to the situation just as anybody else is. And they are, as I said before, they are the utmost professional and they, they are taking care of our kids just by that being them. Does that make sense? Sure. I know we have not done anything intentionally around curricular development thus far. Sure. We're trying to keep it as normal as possible. Any other questions? Any other questions? Um, Can we take a question from the public or no? Anyone, Jim? Uh, we usually do a public comment, but since this is an extraordinary circumstance, uh, go <laughs> ahead. Can I ask from here? Okay? Yeah. Uh, why don't you come up so uh, people can uh, hear you through the microphone, please. Thank you. And also just quickly introduce yourself. So I'm um, Jen Matthews, yeah. two high, parent of two high school students. So. I mean, whether the building stays open or closes, I mean, I trust whatever the school is going to decide. The concerning thing is the hand sanitizer wipes. What are we doing to ensure that kids are washing their hands well and staff as well? I mean, we know that that's the best yep. way of preventing transmission. We have, we have been um, very vigilant in making and reminding students when they leave our classrooms for restroom breaks or whatever. <laughs> Um, to make sure our hands are washed. Um, our, our teachers are doing their utmost with that. And before meals at yep. the cafeteria. Yep. Is there a hand washing yes. at the in, the, at the, in the high school? Not at the high school, at the elementary school there is. Yeah, so I mean, as a healthcare professional, I would encourage that we're doing whatever we can to remind kids to yeah. wash our hands regularly. And soap, we have enough soap. If we're out of cleaner hand sanitizer wipes, I'm looking so, at my guy right there, and he's so, not. So, actually, we're in good shape. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Don't steal our toilet paper, though. <laughs> <laughs> I got lots. <laughs> <laughs> um, should I go on to closure plans? Please, yes. Um, we've spent most of this week uh, planning for closure um, when we weren't um, calming fears. And uh, so I split the closure plans into three categories students, staff, and community. Um, for our students, uh, we have a plan in place for food for those who need it. Um, before I say this, because I don't want to lose it, any family, and Jim, correct me if this wording is wrong, any family who is negatively affected because of this pandemic through the loss of job or hours or work can apply through Jim um, for free and reduced meals at any point in time um, and get that immediately. So if you need help, please reach out to us and get it. Um, we, and help, and if, even if you don't need help, help get that word out to people as you're speaking to them. Um, Jim, did I get that right? That's exactly right, yes. In the event of a closure, if you need help with food, come get it. We, we will be there for you. Um, so for food, for those who don't, our plan is to have a drive-through through, through uh, Montpelier High School, basically. Uh, Jim Birmingham, myself, any other essential staff member will be um, making our lunches every day. And uh, this can most likely begin of day two of closure. We'll probably need a day to get that set up. Uh, meals will be made at the MH MHS uh, cafeteria. We'll hold them in the tech room uh, that has a door to the outside and is very close to the cafeteria. Families can drive, walk, or bike to that door and we will have it well marked. Um, and we'll hand them food each day. Um, we will drive meals to Roxbury and either deliver them door to door if we need to or drive through or have a similar drive through method in the parking lot out of the van, out of the school vans. Um, that will be an all hands on deck for essential staff and I can guarantee we will make it work. For learning, uh, staff have been working and will continue to work on Monday pulling together maintenance of learning work. We do have a two hour delay scheduled on Monday. I will make a phone call in the morning probably around 6 a.m. to remind people of that two-hour delay. Staff are coming to work that day and to plan for learning. 
They have been doing, they've received the messaging around this and guidelines from me um, and our administrative team and union leadership on Thursday. They received that, so they have been working diligently since then. Um, and the plan will be for maintenance of learning, not necessarily new learning. Most middle and high school classroom teachers are ready with Google Classroom. Only a few weren't as confident with Google Classrooms, and those typically weren't core content teachers, but most core content teachers at that level are pretty confident in Google Classroom. Hope is that that's a pretty normal way of going about business, yeah? Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Um, so assignments will be posted on Google Classroom for middle and high school. It will be more analog, kind of learning through a bag, learning in a bag with the elementary folk. They will be working on that now. Um, we've been working a lot on prioritized standards, so all the learning is tied to those prioritized standards. It's like I knew this was going to happen. It's not, so it's not just all learning and all activities, but it's really tied to the essentials of the grade level um, or, or co content course. Uh, this will be ready to go by the end of the day on Monday. We have two, day, two hours in the morning. We'll have an hour staff meeting at the end. If staff tell us they need more time, we will find a way to get them more time. Um, we will be providing both the analog and the online. Synchronous online learning like a, as a college course or what the colleges are preparing to do right now is not possible for us. We just don't have the, the technology infrastructure to make that happen, nor do teachers know that type of learning. Um, and so we're not expecting them to have online learning face-to-face -face on a computer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have the learning as, as best we can taken care of. Teachers will be available through email um, throughout any day that we should be closed should families or students have questions, concerns, comments, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Let me just make a quick note of that. I teach at Vermont Law School, which has one of the better online learning programs, students who have excellent technology and are all older than 22 years old, and VLS has shut down, and it has been a challenge to move everything quickly to online. So it is, it is not an easy thing to do, and I know there's a misperception among some in the community that we can just hit a button and do everything online, and that is not the case at all. So I just want to back up that point. Okay. Um, access. Uh, Middle, we asked every middle and high school student um, if they had a device or if they had internet at home. Um, any kid who's reported that they did not have a device uh, were given one at the end of day today. Um, parents signed a, a, grease and a, a use agreement for that. Um, I, I do think I need to say that all school safety features will still be in effect for those school devices, um, including Go Guardian. Uh, and kids, you'll know what that means. Um, so we have, uh, and we had a pro less than five kids reported not having access to the internet. Um, special education, students on IEPs will receive learning opportunities connected to their IEP goals, as well as modifications and accommodations for any other work. Uh, with any questions on kids and learning? Okay. What about outside placement students? Uh, flexible special, pathways and, and that kind of thing. Not flexible pathways, but special needs student. So an IEP has them out of the building for whatever reason. Out of, out of placement? Yeah. Um, I would imagine that that school, the school would be, we are the LEA, so I, I, you know what, we haven't talked about that yet, Ryan. Okay. That's a good question, though. That's a very good question, yeah. so we will make sure that we talk about that. Sure. Thanks. Um, if parents choose to keep some of their, um, if keep their kids out of school while schools are still open, what? What should they do in terms of like making sure that their students can still have access to learning opportunities? Would that be something like between them yeah. and their teachers? Let's contact. Or? I'd say contact the teachers, and uh, the teachers are going to do the best they can. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other questions on the learning piece for students or food? I, I just want to say I think you're setting really reasonable expectations here. The quality of learning is not going to be what it would be if everybody were in the school building. This is a matter of public health. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there are compromises that need to be made. Uh, staff. Um, thanks, Andrew. Uh, for hourly staff, uh, I recommend to this board um, that we continue to pay all hourly staff based on their annualized salary regardless of whether they can come to work and work from home or not work at all based on their, their um, job. 
So this would include instructional assistants, custodial staff, office assistants, human resources, the staff in the business office who work with Grant, and our tech support staff. Yep. Um, so that would be an action the board would take. Okay. I can, can we just oh, is it food? Say food service and food service. food service. Sorry, Jim, that's not on the list. Thank you. Um, since Aniket and Bridget are uh, potentially on limited cell phone time, I recommend that we take that action now uh, in case we lose them. Um, is that okay, Libby? Mm -hmm. um, do I have a motion to authorize Libby to continue to, um, to continue to pay hourly staff based on their annualized salary regardless of uh, whether the school stays open or not? Um, I'd like to move that we pay all hourly staff based on their annualized salary, regardless of whether they can work from home or not. Including for the service? Including for food service. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Passed as unanimously. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, yes. <laughs> I was going to um, argue that fact if you didn't vote that way anyway. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, essential staff. If we should close the building, only essential staff will have access to the building. Uh, so it's Ryan Harity and Chris Luce, who's the head custodian over at UES. RVS will be Ben Brunel. Main Street Middle School will be Pam Arnold and Glenn Goodell, who's the head custodian. MHS will be Renee DeVore. District would be myself, Andrew LaRosa, Grant Geisler, Deb Garrett, and Joanne Chalou, who are, work, who are the people who work in the business office with Grant, simply because we can't print checks from any place other than the business office. Um, Tom Allen is our, our custodial supervisor. Randy Edmonds is our custodial superstar. Um, <laughs> and, the, and Jim will have access. Randy and Tom will be responsible for MHS and RVS and making sure everything is running normally there. Go ahead, Andrew. Are you sure? Um, all other staff, should we close, will be allowed in the building on the first day of closure to gather personal items. Um, after that first day, the building will be closed to anyone not named to the essential staff list um, and not be allowed in the building. Right. Yeah. Um, I forgot to mention this, but we talked a little bit about whether you're staff or student. If we do close, when you come in to get, to get your items, your personal items, please be sure to get as much of your stuff as possible. If we see a random item, you know, we'll probably be tossing it. So. You know, we want to make sure as much as possible is out of the building, whether you're student or staff. Thanks, Grant. Um, okay, our custodial plan. Um, our custodians are, are big in this, um, and they have been big. Our custodial crew is amazing. Um, and again, give them an elbow bump if you see them. On the first day of closure, all custodians will report to work. They will clean their way out of the building. Once non-essential staff have left the premises, only those custodians listed in the essential staff category, who are the custodial supervisor, the head custodians, and Randy, who's custodial maintenance, will have access back in the building. Um, essential staff will maintain the heating and electricity as well as clean the kitchen area at MHS as needed. Um, should closure be extended and staff be allowed back in the buildings to plan for learning if we need to update materials and things like that, custodial staff will be passed back in and then clean their way out again. Um, that's our staff planning. Yes, any questions? That message about belongings, that's gonna be re-articulated several times, yeah. right, to staff yeah. and students, that's a yeah. good one. Yeah, yeah, it's so, important for parents. Like, Should this happen? Check on the loss and found. Do you wanna talk about and somewhat related, uh, we have a couple hiring processes right now that are going on that I know there's been big public processes in the past and just maybe set some expectations that we may not be able to yeah, yeah. have the level of, of public engagement in those hiring processes yep. that we normally would. Yep. At, uh, next week we are still, as of right now, holding interviews for the Main Street Middle School position. Again, first round interviews. Um, and we have, um, we have public and final interview days set for the 23rd of March and the 25th of March, the 23rd being MSMS, the 25th being RVS, with parent engagement at night for those two things and during um, lunch hours at MSMS. Um, and that is on the books as of right now, however, could change rapidly. 
yeah. um, if we need to change that. I fully recognize how important it is for parental engagement and community engagement in those two and very important hires, and we will do the best we can. Yeah. Um, we'll put our tech guys on something. All right, <clears throat> community. Our website and communication will continue to inform the community on any news decision through three methods of communication. Our website, COVID-19 page, our SWIFT portal, which is what you get when I call you or I email you or text you. Um, we continue with email. Please check your email. I recognize that some people say, well, I just don't check email, so you gotta do it a different way. Please check your email. I can give more information through email than I can through a text and a phone call, um, which is why we've been using email and our website. And also, it will be posted on our social media page. Um, I recognize not everybody is on social media. Um, however, a lot of people are on Facebook. And even if you're just on Facebook limitedly, please follow us on Facebook. <laughs> um, and, and we will use those three methods of communication. I will use voice when I need to use voice. Um, however, I can get more information through email with letters. Um, we implore people to let us know immediately if our messages are not reaching them and you are a person who checks email. Um, <laughs> Uh, we don't know that you're not getting messages unless we are told and can fix it immediately. Um, our guy is on it, he fixes it immediately or he talks you through processes um, and we can, we can make that happen. The website COVID-19 page now has a consistently updated cancellation and postponement page added to it that we will add and we also are trying to make all of those decisions as clear as possible through their three communication methods. But if we do close, the, only the essential staff would be the ones to contact in regards to updates or questions or any information needs by email? Yeah. Uh, well, no, they, uh, you could, well, if, it ter if it's terms of a district and closure and like that kind of thing, most well, definitely contact principals, administration. Um, but if it's a, a question on learning, absolutely contact teachers through email. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any other questions on the communication? Jill, you got any advice there? I think it's been great, actually. Okay, thanks. <laughs> that wasn't a softball. I was just curious. <laughs> we have any questions? <laughs> um, all right. I, we've already talked about this. The access to facilities, the general public, including students and parents, will have no access under any circumstances to the inside of any building once they are clean. I don't want to use cleaning products for non-essential activities. Um, public point of distribution. I learned one of the questions that I have asked throughout this process um, and we have started to ask each other as habit in the leadership is what question are we not asking? Like placements out of school, we didn't ask that question yet. Um, so what questions are we not asking? When I asked that question of Tom Allen the other day, he said, oh, did you know we're a public point of distribution? I said, what's that? Um, so uh, Montpelier High School is the public point of distribution for central Vermont. What that means is that we have to have our facility ready within four hours should there need to be a mass vaccine distribution. Right now they don't have a vaccine, so I was told today by the Department of Health that this is not part of the conversation yet, um, but very well could be. So we had to designate contacts for the DOH. We have done that. Is there myself, Tom, Andrew, and or Grant? Um, all of us know the plan if it's needed. We allow our facility to be an emergency office and confidential acts annex to the Department of Health and be on site if anything is needed. Uh, the four of us will, will do that. Um, this is only put in action when, the, when and if the vaccines are ready. Um, and currently we have two areas that are designated um, and it's this side of the building, the auditorium and or the gym, is should that need and we can close the rest of the building. So MHS would be open at its two ends for food and then for vaccines if needed. Um, the board just, I felt the board needed to know that. Um, continue your board meetings. This is another action for this board to take. Uh, and I recommend we continue, yes. continue them um, and open up the building for the board during board meetings and we will figure out how to, we'll figure out a way to allow for public comment through different means, if possible. So that's another place for the board to discuss. Um, Question on that: How much, how much of a cleaning burden is continuing board meetings during? Not much. Not much. No. Okay. Um, should we have a motion to continue board meetings? 
at I'm, I move yeah, yeah I move to continue holding board meetings the second second those in favor aye any opposed aye Okay. On Perfect. that on that front, can I ask two questions related to board meetings? Um, yes. One is we were originally on a schedule to bring in a new board member. Yes. Are we gonna just kind of put that to the side until all of this passes over? Or that's a good question. I I suggest we take that up Wednesday because we do board meeting Wednesday. Okay. Um, it's a good question though. Um, the the other. Yeah, I, I'm not sure it changes much. I, I think if we don't if we don't have um, yeah you know, someone interested uh, by that date, we can always extend it later. But we also have other board committees that are planning to meet in the next month. Just next week, we have Main Street Middle School, uh, some subgroups from Main Street Middle School Building Committee, as well as the Negotiations Committee with the teachers. Do we want to postpone any of that type of stuff? Um, I think that some issues should probably be dealt with with the union. Yeah, my sense um, is negotiations should probably be come, come up with the, we had a session today that the district decided to cancel, the board members decided to cancel on their end because of the rapidly evolving situation and the union was very cooperative. Um, but I, I think those could continue potentially through phone meetings. It would depend on you know the, the district and the union kind of figuring that out. Yeah. Yeah. I think to the extent that something like the MSMS meetings occupy space after those are things we can probably postpone. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's yeah. opening up the building. Yeah. So. What I'm hearing right now is negotiations. We'll still have that. We'll at least we'll have figure a. That we'll figure that yeah, out because that is something that is critical, obviously, to the function. It's, it's and it's also something that can easily happily remotely. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm sure it'll change the nature a little, but I think it's something that can be done by phone or so, you know, Microsoft Meet yeah. Teams or something. Whereas other like policy committee and MSMS building committee, those are things that can probably. I think we can push those okay. off until we're happy because I. Yeah. Especially something like the MSMS committee, which you know is doing great work, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not, opening it's not the critical. middle school. Um, I think we can push that off. Yeah. And yeah. You know, it's not time sensitive. Yeah, it's not time sensitive. Just to clarify, are you talking about that in terms of if we close only? I think in general, I, that just seems like an extracurricular activity. Yeah, you know, a use of the building after hours that brings people together, that is not critical to, you know, the essential functions that were. I. I I, I like that because I feel like our administration's yeah. already s super stretched. Yeah. Um, and MSMS building committee involves Andrew, it involves Anna, it involves Libby, Libby, it involves Pam. Yep. So I don't necessarily want that to stretch their, I don't want any of this to stretch their time any yeah. more than is necessary so that they can focus on. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's time, it's cleaning supplies. It's probably, honestly, not the best time to focus on the issue until we get out of this. Totally. Yeah, um, yeah so let's. Um, yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah. All right. Let me make one quick point. We were talking about the public point of distribution. The Roxbury Village School is Roxbury's emergency Red Cross shelter. No. Would those individuals who are responsible yeah. for the emergency shelter be, how should we say, an essential staffer to be able to access the building or at least be in contact with the right people? Yeah. Why, don't, why, don't have, why don't we coordinate to make sure we have the right people in the right building and they also know where supplies are and things of that nature? Sure. Yeah. So um, I think the purpose of this meeting was to react to Governor Scott and lay fears in that way and make sure the board and the community are um, know that the, the administration, teachers, and everybody else has been working incredibly hard on making plans to, to make sure should closure or whatever happen that we have, we've been working on it. <laughs> So we're ready to go in any event. Um, and I'll be talking to the teachers this weekend and the principals this weekend, and we'll see what we got. Yeah, and I just want to reiterate you know, my, our thanks to uh, the administration, to all the teachers, to the students, mm -hmm. uh, to the entire community for, uh, I think, a very positive reaction to a fast-moving situation and a lot of hard work. 
Uh, it's just beginning, um, so expect things to change rapidly. Um, you know, hopefully uh, the measures we're taking avoid any, uh, you know, serious uh, public health uh, issues and, and that we are being preventative and, and that the preventative measures work. Um, in terms of this board, uh, we will be prepared to meet on an emergency basis as needed. Uh, we will try our best to get Orca here uh, when we can. We're, we want to also thank Orca for coming here on very short notice. Um, and I know that some community members are watching, a few have texted me. So, um, so thank you for coming. And again, if, if we have another emergency meeting, we'll try to have Orca here. Uh, and communicate uh, as much as possible, but you know, this is a fast-moving situation, and um, you know it, it. It will, I'm sure, change uh, uh, between now and, and the next few days, at well, least I'll in some it. way. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. So thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments uh, before I ask for a motion to adjourn? I just wanted to say how much I appreciate how much time and effort you put into this because yeah. I feel as a parent, very reassured that no matter which path, yeah. you guys have obviously done a huge amount of legwork and I don't think it'll be in vain. And uh, just in our preparations in my job at the state, I know how we're constantly calibrating our reaction and so how we feel about this Monday or what the instructions are from the CDC or whoever by the time we all meet on Wednesday might be very different. Um, I appreciate that you have looked into the, the cleaning supply and that's the part, honestly, that I'm really worried about. So I think maybe at our board meeting we have some sort of a quick update on yeah. where things are yeah. at. I think we'll talk about this quite a bit yeah. on Wednesday. But thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, and we do have okay. uh, a board meeting scheduled Wednesday. So um, and this is the topic. This will be the topic. <laughs> yes, uh, and and I will. Yeah, we we may want to meet before then too, depending on what happens. So, um, so uh, thank you everyone for for coming on short notice. Uh, Grant. Uh, just one quick one. Our director of special education just called me because she heard the conversation about um, outside placements. Um, so she wanted to let us know she has already had conversations with all of the schools that provide outside placement services. None of them are closed as of yet. Um, and they will be coordinating with us if they do close because of having you know, a staff shortage or something like that. The expectations are similar to what we're planning on doing for our kids in our schools. They will coordinate with, with kiddos if they can't, if they close and try to maintain some level of learning. There's, I'm sure, much more that she would say, but that's about as limited or as I can go as far as my limited knowledge. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank all right. you all for coming yeah. today. Yeah, thank you. Okay, right. motion to adjourn. Yeah. Seven twenty five. <laughs> yeah. um, Move to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thanks Aye. again, everyone. Great.